Hello everyone, this is Kyoda. I'm gonna go into uh, another week's uh, tutorial thing, and this one's gonna be about how to milk a short bass sample and get the most out of it as you possibly can. To jump right into it, uh, let's just compare. Uh, let's let's see. This is the bass sample that I'm gonna be using for this example, which is relatively short. I think it'd be kind of hard to like write an entire song with that as far as like variety goes. And the end result is this. So before we get into step one, I think I'll just explain briefly how this bass was made, which is the example that we're running with. It's pretty straightforward. I have an operator here, all four os uh, oscillators turned on with the routing set this way so that the first two oscillators are in serial and the last two are in parallel, uh, which then go through uh, modulate B and then A. Second oscillator is set to course two with the fine tuning up a little bit if I mute these and turn off the effects. We just hear that. Without the fine tuning, you don't get that little wobbly effect, which is just kind of like a detuning. I like to just have a little. And then with these two on, these are in parallel. Um, if I were to actually turn the detuning down on oscillator B, you can very clearly hear what uh, the detuning of these two saw waves. Here. So with the fine tuning up on this, you already get like a little bit of variety. It's a good starting point for anything. And then I just kind of EQ'd out those harmonics a little bit, turn on a little bit of erosion, and then some uh, saturation. Now the second step of this, and this is before step one. I basically, I put it, I EQ'd out the harmonics a little bit more, threw on a vocoder, I put uh, LFOs on the formant and on the depth of the vocoder, a little OTT, never heard anyone, I got two parallel morph filters with the LFOs controlling the frequency and the morph, with the rates being different on both of these, because if they were the same, then uh, there, you wouldn't have variety, it would just be the same thing. Uh, so. Let's see how that sounds. Oh, and if you're wondering what this, uh, why it's in a group and what this operator is doing here, this is a pulse signal that's being fed into the distortion uh, of the group that these are both in. And that's to create like this weird 2B effect. Uh, there, I have an entire video on it. It's a tip that Copycat showed me. It's the most recent video that I did. So I'm not gonna go into that right now, but mo the bulk of the effects on the bounced audio from this part here sounds like this. Oh, wait, let me turn this down. So that's this here. All right, so now to get right into it. Basically, I've made a, it's a sampler. I'm gonna turn off all the effects. Um, you wanna select as much of like a window of that sample as you can with the crossfade up as like high as you can go without it like getting the, to the end of it. So, I mean, if it were past this, then it wouldn't really crossfade very well if it were actually like getting to the end. Um, <clears throat> I have it set to loop. You could do loop back too, it's whatever really. I have the FM oscillator turned on and I automate the volume a little bit. I have the course set to one and I have the fine tuning at around six. And the fine tuning is also being controlled by an LFO here, just a tiny little bit. And the reason being is because even without this filter on, uh, which I'll go into in a sec, um, even without that on, because of the fine tuning being a little off, um, it's going to sound different each time it loops th uh, back. <laughs> At least a little bit. And then I just play with the volume in an automation, which is right here. Uh, 
I also have a low pass filter, which is being automated here. And then I've duplicated this group so that the window here on the sample is the same. The only thing that I've changed is I've turned off the oscillator here uh, for the FM and I've turned on uh, and I've changed the filter to morph and then I've automated the morph uh, also. For the most part, most of these, uh, the frequency changes in both the low pass and the morph are very sim similar, at least over here they are. Um, the point of the morph is just to like get a little, you can kind of add a little top in like at points where like the low pass is completely taken away any of the high end you can kind of mitigate that by just changing the uh type of filter with the morph thing and then let's see in order of appearance we have a pedal a little with the wet down at like 14 an auto filter notch with the amount of the LFO at like 23, rate at 1.12 and the frequency at 403. This is like whatever, like you can kind of play with this. I just kind of like the parameters there. Uh, OTT again, a little vocoder. I have automated the depth in the formant, saturator again, and then another EQ to just take out a little bit of those harmonics. Now to get into the fun stuff. Step two. Step two would be, I'm going to switch my screen now. Over here, I've got all these things set up to a bunch of different things. Now to go back into Ableton, explain this real quick. I've just dragged this, um, the bounced audio from, from this into this sampler. And in this sampler, I am doing the same thing as, as far as uh, the loop sustain mode being on. Um, I do have the oscillator on with the FM again, but this time I'm not modulating it. I have the pitch envelope set up to a macro, the amount set up to a macro, the attack set up to a macro, decay, and then the, I have the loop turned on and the time turned on also. These macros are set up to these four sliders here. I can freaking, you know. And then I have Serum FX. This is where it starts to get fun. <clears throat> now, I have this actually, none of, let's see. These are set to trigger. I have a bunch of these LFOs that are controlling a bunch of different things. It's somewhat random. Uh, I have four LFOs that I'm using um, with pretty wacky things going on. Then I have the rates control, the uh, macro one is controlling the rates of LFO two and LFO four and the rate two macro is controlling the rates of LFO one and LFO three. Um, these LFOs are controlling a myriad of different things, um, mostly uh, filter, I think uh, EQ here, which is also just like kind of peaks that are going around over there. Um, da, 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 da the tension of the peaks and then I think the rest is just macros. Yep. So I have this timber one, which is just set up to the delay on this chorus. And then I have timber two is I think just the depth. You can get crazier with whatever you set these up to. And now I'm going to go over. Those are all set up to these different things. So I have, um, this is the rate here. This is the second rate. This is the timbre. This is the second timbre. This is the <coughs> EQ here, the, where it lies. So let's see. Yeah. This is the second EQ, which is this one here. This is the filter frequency, which is uh, on a low pass right now. This here is the chorus feedback. And then this is the wet of the reverb, which is also being automated a little bit. Yeah. And then this one here is the um, chorus dry wet. And then that is everything.
And then also I have these set up to the pitch envelope, pitch loop, uh, a pitch loop speed, the pitch attack envelope, and the pitch decay envelope. And to switch back real quick, like it's it gets really really crazy when you have all those different things going on and i also uh would recommend playing i have this one on trigger so that uh which is being triggered by these dummy midi notes down here uh and this one is on trigger but then the rest are not on trigger but i would just play back and forth between the two but let's see <coughs> I'm actually going to open up Serum. I'm going to switch back and forth between this view and my uh, MIDI controller. But uh, you can see what's going on. I'm going to start with the MIDI controller, though. <laughs> I mean, that's mostly it. And that's what this recording is here. It's not the same one. It's not what I just recorded. But uh, this recording here uh, is from doing exactly that. <laughs> Oops. So what's my thesis? Um, basically, you just, you don't have to have a MIDI controller to do this, but it's very fun. If you do and it's cool to just get hands-on plus you can turn more than one knob at the same time whereas if you just are using your mouse obviously you can't get that you can get the live experience like the human experience if you're gonna record automate like you know record while you tweak things with your mouse but obviously you can tweak more things if you have a MIDI controller because you have two hands <coughs> but yeah um, I hope that this was informational uh, it's crazy like you know this short sample, I was able to milk it and turn it into this long boy. Uh, that's it. The uh, project file for this one is going to be, there's going to be a link for that in the description. Uh, this is also the fourth in the series of uh, weekly tutorials I've been doing. And uh, if you like it, you can uh, buy that project file for two bucks or you can get it for free if you join my Facebook group, Kyoto's Kitchen. The link for that will also be in the description. And, uh, I also put out a sample pack if you're looking for some gnarly samples. Link for that will also be in the description. But thanks for watching, you big boys, and peace out.